Brendan Mitchell's here. <sighs> I thought, why am I here? Oh, there. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. What's up, man? How are you? Was I on mute? <laughs> How are you, my man? I think I was on mute here. I, I'm just picking up right now. How, how are things in the library, my man? Things are good. Good to hear. I, I like it's my little lair here. Superman made me to his fortress of solitude. So do you, my friend. Actually, I think. Is it bleeding through? No, that might just be one of the books. I was wondering if that might have been like a little bit of green screen bleeding through up there or not. Because I, I let the secret out, I think, on the OCI. I've shown it before, but I like people always say, you know, it's really good looking place, you know, how much effort. And I'm like, well, yeah, only that much effort there. Yeah. It's nice. I usually green screen Andres Vegas' uh, house. That's my background, but maybe next time. That'd be good. Andres, you, you, can I maybe take take a meeting with you at some point? Do you think I can get invited? What do you think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll, we'll do the 360 degree drone of the house. I love it. Let's do it. For the longest time, I was using um, Colbert's guest room from Steam Colbert's. At one point, he like did the scene where he went off screen. I'm like, screenshot. It's my background. I work from his nice. office now. Dude, I used to work with him when I worked at Comedy Central. He's one of the nicest nice. human beings I've ever met in my life. Like that guy was, he deserves every bit of his success. Great dude. Awesome. Cool. Let's let's get started. There's been a lot of focus and gained progress in, in the last week, uh, particularly having dedicated writers. Uh, Michael, thank you. You were hoping to have for today uh, the dedicated writers. I see several here today. Uh, give an update each. Uh, before we do that, uh, anything you want to add? Um. No, uh, nothing to add. Just wanted to also make it clear that obviously anybody else can sort of contribute, add comments um, while we're kind of going through this. But uh, yeah, beyond that, um, uh, I don't know who wants to start, but um, <laughs> feel free to uh, uh, chime in. You're one of the dedicated writers yourself. Oh, okay. Well, so I, will, I guess I will start then. Um, so... Uh, let me see. Should I just share some of this? Um, well, uh, I guess just to get get started here. Um, so as as we kind of discussed a little bit last time, um, and to also clarify, I guess actually to take a step back before I give my my main update, um, to give a little bit of context from last time, um, we want to make sure that it is very clear that currently, sort of like in general, as long as anything can be considered part of the secure software factory, it is potentially within scope. Um, but we need folks to actually sort of contribute to the doc. Uh, if at some point, you know, um, uh, you know, if you think it should be in there, feel free to make a comment, edit, etc. Uh, to sort of um, include that content. If you feel like a certain person needs to sort of be involved, feel free to, you know, talk with them and, and, and bring them on. Um, but in general, we need to start, you know, putting pen to paper. And if it turns out, uh, it's, it's better to have more content and we cut down than to have less content and not know what we should be including. So feel free to just sort of add stuff. And if it turns out, hey, it doesn't really necessarily make sense, we could always edit it out later. But once again, uh, more is better than less for, for right now. So with all that said, uh, my update for this week, and let me, um, I don't know why it's not pop it up here. Uh, wait, there we go. Oh no, I can't show that. Okay, so uh, don't have it set up right now to share my screen, but um, the main things that I was working on was mostly focused on just kind of getting some initial stuff set up. So my background is a lot in like sort of build security, build infrastructure security and those pieces. So I've mostly focused on that. Um, that includes things like the different parts of the pipeline, um, different uh, 
different parts of the actual sort of building compilation steps. Uh, there's uh, probably a lot of stuff in there that I'm taking a little bit for granted. Like I am saying, hey, these things should be signed. Exactly what keys they are assigned, being signed with is sort of, I am not making, um, you know, I'm not super uh, experienced in that sort of thing. So if somebody has ideas on what needs to be included as part of sort of key distribution and those sorts of things, I know Marina started to take a look at that and a few others have started to take a look at that. But um, that's sort of what I've been uh working on. And I noticed a few other folks have, have added some additional sort of comments and thoughts. That's uh, the update from my end. Who do you want to tag? Uh, just first person that shows up on my list here, uh, Priya, do you want to? Yeah, totally. I can give an update. Um, so yeah, I've basically just been kind of like adding in some stuff to the doc. I think I filled out the first couple sections, which were more like um, high level, like, oh, what is the purpose of this doc? Who is the audience? And kind of like, what is the supply chain? And then yesterday, I worked on a diagram of how all the actual tools we're thinking about putting into the architecture would work together. So turns out making a diagram takes a lot longer than I thought it would. Um, and the diagram itself is definitely just like, super basic and I fully expect that like maybe we'll add we'll like switch out some of these tools for other tools or like it'll end up like we'll add have to add things or like change it to like make it more like friendly to understand but it's kind of just like my first pass at showing how all of the actual tools themselves will work together okay I guess I have to tag them the next, huh? Um, how about Alex? Um, I have, uh, I, so I think, I think the, the, we discussed yesterday as we were, was, we were talking through this document a little bit, the, the framework for it, which, um, which I think is, um, a pretty good approach here. We're, we're basically starting off with the, the theoretical design of a software factory without getting too too in the weeds in tools and implementations and then kind of working our way um, into the details and um, so I have am, am working my way through the document kind of following that pattern um, I haven't yet gotten into um, the real weeds of this yet but I've started adding um, a little bit more to the the introductory material and just kind of trying to set up that framework and then uh, I'm going to keep reading through and and looking for where um uh i think i can jump in and add more content to uh what's not already there um i see the, the next person i see is uh is Shripad. yeah hi everyone uh so if i'm double booked with the baby duty so if you hear some background that's some noise in the background sorry about that so yeah, I also took a, a pass over these uh, all sections. I have added some uh, new sections there around uh, uh, securing the user credentials in the pipeline, uh, uh, securing user credentials in the pipeline. And I'm currently focused on the build, uh, running the build process. Uh, I added some sections and I'm extending that. And also how do we secure the data flow in the pipeline? So I added some sections and uh, I got some comment from Michael, so I will basically try to put some examples there and uh, work on that. So yeah, uh, I think in the next couple of days, I'll probably have more updates. Uh, I'll see more updates on the draft there. Yeah, next one uh, is uh, uh, Brendan. Uh, Me or Tom? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mitchell. I'm, I'm saving Mitchell. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I like good, that Brandon. good good Brandon. <laughs> I, I like that delegation. Um, just real quick here, since it's not in the main doc that everybody else can see. I'm going through doing distribution and storage, defining some terms, getting some paragraphs written. And once I get this looking in a little bit of reasonable shape, I'll go ahead and throw that in as a big suggestion on the on the main document. So throwing in what's a repository, how are artifacts structured, talking about the content addressable storage. Um and then what a signature looks like when we start pushing this into the storage and qualities that we need. So going through and I'll 
keep adding to this. And then after that looks like it's in a good shape, I'll get it pushed over to our main document. And now I've got to tag someone else. So um, Marina, I'll go ahead and tag you. All right, yeah, so I've just been going through the doc and um, looking at adding some sections. I think I, I made a few suggestions about things like identity and identifying the keys that we're then using to verify these different steps and just generally pushing kind of verification as well as having all the, um, the other secure steps. Oh yeah, and then I'm supposed to tag someone. Um, <laughs> who have we not heard from? Um, I'll go with Ditya. Sure. Uh, so I was also taking a look at the document. I, uh, a lot of it made sense to me. I was curious about where we should start discussing. So, so we have these sections about, you know, that, for example, in the admission controller, I see Marina added something about uh, it should uh, verify that all the steps were performed by the right people. And that, that's the identity stuff that we were discussing last week. But I have a question about what we're verifying against and how, you know, the policy itself and what's a good place to discuss securely distributing and bootstrapping those policies themselves and so on. That's mostly what I had in mind when I was looking at the document this week. For the time being, everything is fair game. So wherever you feel is the most appropriate place, feel free to take a stat at it and plant the seed or fully like do it from start to finish. But anything that stands out, yes, like in a glaring omission or like, well, here's where I think I can make my contribution, go for it. Just to echo what, what Michael said previously. Yeah, uh, I'll take a pause on that. Cool. Could you tag? Oh, oops. Oh, uh, my bad. Uh... I will tag uh, on Atma. Okay, thank you. Um, so um, I had started working on verification of inputs and outputs, um, which are in that document that uh, Brandon had sent out in the Slack channel. Um, I need to do some more work there. Um, some of the policies that Aditya is mentioning, um, I have a point there as well to describe that, policy decisions and verification of those policies and enforcement policies. Um, but at the same time, there is another subsection that I need to do some work on, and that is the runtime of validation of controls and okay. supply chain as well. So um, basically making sure what is in CI CD pipeline is actually running in runtime as well. So uh, you don't have any data there. Um, to that okay. effect, I need to add some controls there. Okay. Fabulous. Thank you. And sorry, I was late. I don't know who's left. <laughs> so, I don't know that there's anyone left. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if, uh, Andres, you gave your uh, update. So I am doing a number of, of different things, uh, primarily uh, going through end-to-end uh, -end and figuring out from, from what we have so far, well, how do we start to inform that later on coherency and structure that we're not focusing on as much up front because we're content creating but starting to, to figure out well from conversations with many of you how we start to shuffle things so it's not like utterly chaotic uh so just trying to think of of a lot of that what else i think as as you folks were giving updates something else came to mind let me haven't had my coffee yet, so let me uh, gather my thoughts here. Yeah, more than just if there's there's something that we discussed at one point and we really didn't have consensus, wasn't well received, or there was a lot of discussion, uh, but no commit from anyone, uh, let's revisit that if you feel strongly about it and like put it in writing and it'll be easier to sell and convey what, what you were trying to get across. Um, but yeah, there's, there's that. And that's, that's pretty much it. I think we were picking up pace. 
starting to see a, a good cadence. I I don't know if like, well, given that we have booked this time, we can keep the Zoom on, but anyone who wants to go heads down and start writing for the next 45 minutes to use this as focused writing time, we can do that. If we have other things to talk, we can like, yeah, hop back or stay on and talk through those things. I have a quick question. Andres, um, okay. on the reference architecture, um, is it okay to put comments? Some thoughts come. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's the other thing I, I, I wanted to mention that we discussed yesterday. Comments are good. However, uh, everything is fair game. If, if you feel you can make a, an edit or you can reword something that's written there, we're gonna try not to be strongly attached to what we, we authored because while well, we wanna make different iterations over hash over the same text over and over by, by different people to make sure we start getting that uh, uniform and coherent voice. So if, if you feel it's it's not something that you're entirely changing the meaning of what's being said or just taking it away, uh, and it's just you're you're helping like clarify or crystallize or you're adding on to it, just feel free to make the edit. Because it, with too many comments, it gets it gets messy really easy and it's it's hard to read and it's not sure who you're making the comment to or who owns the resolution of that comment. So yeah, use those use those sparingly, but if needed, go for it. Thank you. Yeah. What other questions do folks have? on how to engage and how, how to write. So I'm on task for some of the the runtime stuff. Um, one of the things that I really need is like some of the aspects of the control, like I need some of the reference architecture aspects kind of defined there because I, I know how I'm going to do it. There might be some things I have to offer, author some new like rule sets or, you know, look at some, some tools to be able to like suggest that. So I'm kind of digesting that enough for me to put that into words because I'm also writing another document for something else that I can I can kind of push into this. Um, my thought process here is the control plane aspect of this, right? There's not a lot that we're, um, you know, there's things that we're, we're there, that are implied, but they're not really defined a bit. So that's something I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to work on, and by the next meeting, I'll have kind of uh, I'll add to the doc with that uh, detail. Great. All right. All right. And I know we're working on that together to a certain degree. So I'll, uh, I'll send it to you to kind of bless. So you're, you're kind of in the loop on it as well. Does that sound okay? Yeah, do you, definitely. Do you feel you're blocked on writing the runtime piece? Yeah, yeah until I, I need like the underlying, what is that control plane for me to define what we're protecting, right? Because yeah. I, I almost come later, right? It's like you, you need the pipeline and all the underlying you know assets to be able to define like what what those things are. Um, I understand, like I said, like the, the, the flow that we have, right? And a lot of what, what's cool is a lot of the, the runtime protection, I already know we have, you know, rules in there for, but if there's stuff that we have to craft, I wanna be able to like spend time and create those rules and then make that something that we can publish. <clears throat> That's part of it. Those, those making certain assumptions and then we work backwards from that and we fill yeah. in so that was my sure. idea. Yeah, that was my idea. Anyway, it was like, look, run is root. I mean, come on, like, that's, that's obvious. That's an obvious one, right? Changing, you know, specific, you know, sensitive directories or files or shmining things. The only problem with that is, I don't know what those directories are, right? I can't really root, write a rule until we have something in play for me to go, okay, let me take a look and see what the hell's going on here, right? So, but, okay. but basically, what I'm saying is, is once we have this and I don't want to belie beleaguer the, the topic right now because we have enough shit to deal with. But I'm saying once that's there, it's really fairly simple for me to kind of do that. Once I know like what yeah. what the attack surface is, right? Yeah, the yeah, specifics. Yeah, probably all you can write right now is just really high level overview of yes, you should apply runtime and yep. the most feature complete solution out of uh, as of the time of this writing is this. 
Uh, so that's another great point that we discussed. We were we were split on well. In some cases, we have multiple tools available, and how do we reason picking one over the other? It's well, we we made kind of a big splash of of this working group, and we summoned people, and were the ones who showed up, and we have subject matter expertise of of one tool over the other, right? So we up in the top section are trying to put a disclosure, like we're, we've written it out together. I think it could use some further word smithing around, hey, we're making an effort to be as neutral as possible, but given what we're building, the, the sharpest tool specialized for this task that we know of and we, we recommend is this one. This is not the only one. We know this other ones exist. We don't know those so well. Uh, and that's why it's iterative. Work. Like we talked about, it's iterative, yeah. right? So if it, exactly. at the time of the writing, it's this, it's V1, it's exactly this line in the sand. And then if somebody from some of these other tools, like if, you know, if we go OPA, for instance, and Caverno wants to add their, their two cents or, or, you know, whatever the vulnerability scanning the Jure project is, then go ahead and add your two cents. But at the time of this writing, this is specifically what we're calling out. Because again, we could literally be here for two years if we need to, if we want to get, you know, boil a goddamn ocean. Yeah. And, and the thing is, we, we do want this to be long-lived and be a, a living document for, for as much as possible. I have, yet that to, I have yet to see that be the case with anything ever written. Like people don't go back and, and do other editions or like the cost of, of doing a second edition is just very time consuming or very expensive. So yeah, we can, we can have some coverage given we were caveating like hey here's a picture of the ecosystem you can go look at that there's bucket areas you can look of you can look at alternatives there but here's what we strongly believe or here's what we know better yep i think we're in agreement kind of piggybacking on that um, in the, the mapping of entities to project section of the of the document as we have it right now I duplicated the chart that was in there. Um, the chart that I added, I'm not expecting us to keep in the final document, but I just thought while we're in the writing phase of this, it might be helpful to have this. And I just I just changed the, the columns to be a column that's just listing CNCF projects, a column that's listing other open source stuff, a column that's listing possible commercial tools. And then I, I thought maybe it's helpful for us to, to fill that in a little bit. And then that gives us a bit more um, uh, you know, of, of a bird's eye view of what's out there as we're deciding which tools we're going to zero in on for this architecture. No, that makes sense. Uh, that's exactly why uh, we I created that that kind of uh, table there exactly for that reason, because then if, you know, if, if we send this out to a certain group and say, hey, look, you know, um, Spire can be used here, Tecton or whatever it might be, then at least we have consensus, right? But we're saying, here's the here's what we're using in the reference architecture, but there could be some alternate. So we're kind of making sure that we're, it's a holistic, um, at least in inspired uh, uh, architecture. That's a lot of big words for me this morning. Wow. Honestly, I'm a bit lost um, and I need some education here. When we say control plane, which control plane are we talking about? You know, in my mind, there are multiple control planes. Are we talking about the Kubernetes control plane? Or are we talking about the control plane for CI CD pipelines where we manage the software security? So I, I think um, I, I would say, I think in this case, the control plane is that sort of high level, you know control plane for all the components or sorry the primary components of the secure software factory that's what I, I i would think which i would imagine just based around the cloud native aspect of it it's most likely going to be something like yeah it would be kubernetes plus custom resource definitions and operators and that kind of thing 
Yeah, it's important to distinguish because as a reader, that can be confusing, right? Control plane is an overloaded term these days. Yeah, Everybody yeah. uses control plane, but which control plane precisely we're talking about, I think is really important to define. Is, is workload, workload orchestrator a better term or does that get conflated with CD? And if not that, uh, could it be like infrastructure API? <sighs> yeah. I Eventually. How does the, I think there's, there's some documents from the CNCF side. I think that, that also, um, let me see if I can find them that I think have like an actual definition of what they would consider something like Kubernetes to fall under. Yeah. Container orchestrator. Yeah, I think they literally call it scheduling and orchestration. Is uh, for automating. Yeah, so I guess container scheduling and orchestration, something like that. Cool. That makes sense. Thank you. With that said, I think that there's something still to be. Um, I think the the only thing I'm also gonna say there is is I I do think that with the the problem i think with some of these definitions is when you start to look at how kubernetes in particular handles stuff like um orchestra uh, sorry um operators and custom resource definitions all of a sudden even that scheduling and orchestration piece gets overloaded to mean all sorts of different things cuz like to some extent right like you you can't uh, as far as i'm aware you can't deploy tecton outside of something like a kubernetes Okay. Actually, say that one more time. I got sidetracked reading Alex's comment, realizing this is what he was initially referencing, not the top table. Oh, the, the only thing there was just, just something to kind of, I think, be aware of and and it's something that i know not everybody has still completely grokked in the cloud native space um is sort of like how kubernetes nowadays right with with orchestrators and custom resource definitions can largely do any sort of scheduling and orchestration so it's it's one of those things is just like hey when when looking at these things the reason why we're including scheduling and orchestration here is not just the cloud native piece but when looking at stuff like Tecton and, and these other pieces, like these other pieces don't operate outside of that sort of world, right? right. You can't, you know, run, you know, it's, you can't run Tecton the same way you run just like a Jenkins with some nodes, with some, you know, worker nodes. Yeah, you're, you're leveraging Kubernetes to deploy and operate all those different moving pieces. Yep. And not just your applications. You're using it to provision infrastructure as well. Scheduling and orchestration platform. That begs the question too, like when we say Kubernetes, are we defining the managed versus, yeah, well, I don't even, I don't wanna get into that discussion because I will be here for a while, but like Kubernetes implies managed or uh, self-managed, right? So we're not making that distinction here, right? Correct. Not yet, but it's it's up for if if you feel strongly about it, feel free to write about it, and we can evaluate it there. That's a good point. Alex, and you were talking about the bottom table? Yeah, I 
I just put this in here for the purposes of our brainstorming. I'm expecting that the top table is what's going to be in the final document, but while we are figuring out what should be in the top table, that the bottom table might be a helpful organizer. That's what I put that in there for. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, let's let's populate that with what is CNCF, what is open source, what do we know that that's commercially out there? Right? Commercial for pipeline framework would be what like harness and armory. Yeah, I don't know that we necessarily need to fill in every single one of these fields either. But I just figured as we were doing this, you know, I, we we talked about having sort of a preference for CNCF and open source. And so it might be helpful to have sort of laid out what's in what category as we're trying to figure out what we want to actually recommend or, or talk about. I, I yeah. know, I know one thing I'll say here is I know it's, I'm really, uh, this might be a difficult thing, but like later on, we may, before we end up publishing it, basically just surface this table and say, what is it we're missing? It, but I, that will introduce like a lot of people bringing in like, you know, a lot of opinions, right? Which Brandon, I think, you know, you all felt, probably felt that during some of the best practices document that, you know what I mean? Like, hey, how do we, how do we discern like what to include here? But um, I think we take our, you know, first pass at this, just like we're doing and just say, look, this is what we've seen at the time of the, this document. Because if, you know, I, that's my concern here, that people will be like, oh, well, you, you didn't think about, you know, this solution or this solution, right? But I think it's exactly what Andres mentioned earlier. So, like, at the time of the writing of this document, the people that are involved, this is why we made some of these decisions. Yeah. And say you start writing the, the runtime piece and you're really in the flow. And you're like, well, you were saying you, you were waiting for some stuff to be written. So, you know, like, hey, what is it that I'm applying runtime security against? And what this table helps is like, you can go look, well, let me talk about the first one on the top left box. But if, if we were super prescriptive and saying, well, we need to talk about first and second option and we don't have a second option, then, then you're blocked. And well, your flow goes to waste. And then you start running in circles because well, CI, CD, well, CI is pretty, pretty well soft for containers. CD, it's like, uh, like if I'm going to talk about like multi-cluster deployment, uh, there's not something quite out there for that. Uh, I'm I just think we, 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 we take it by what is at the time of the writing. I think we're, we're all in agreement on it. And I, I totally agree because it, it will block us if, yeah. if we have to go that, if we have to think of all the things. And where there are gaps, it will it will inform people about areas of opportunity for building new projects. Hundred thousand percent, dude. Cool. Uh, I know. I know. My voice is very monotone, and for anyone who's trying to write, you're probably not getting any focus. <laughs> or like, shit. I had forty five minutes. Now I have like twenty five. This is not. I'm not going to be productive enough. So I'll stop. Michael has a better voice, so go for it. You want to say something? Oh, no, no. I was just going to uh, ask. <laughs> um, I was just going to ask if anybody had any other sort of thoughts or, or concerns, um, anything else that they wanted to kind of uh, discuss while we're all here.
you all have to drop. I will see you in a bit. <laughs> um, so actually I have a question because I, as I was kind of looking through, uh, does anybody have any uh, opinions or do, do they think we should even make an opinion on stuff like underlying container runtime or should we just, you know, say, Hey, Kubernetes and like, as long as you're applying these sorts of security standards, you should be, you should be fine. Yeah, I think that's probably out of scope for the moment. We could maybe link to other guides and or our future guide um, for that, but yeah. Yeah, it would be super zoomed in, but what's the argument in favor of including it? No, uh, no argument. I was just kind of throwing it out there just as I was kind of going through and just saying like, well, I think the, the there is going to be some minor things, um, but we can just sort of refer, I think it's better if we just refer to those documents because there's inevitably certain things that are like, oh, this container runtime supports this security thing today. This one doesn't. Um, and I'm just, I am curious if there's anything that we are doing that necessarily, that necessitates us making a decision based on that. Because once again, I'm not super familiar with Spire and some of these other things, but I know like for some of my stuff, um, just like my own stuff that I run locally, right? There are certain things that it's like, oh, this does not run with Podman. It has to run with Docker. Um, this has to run with this container runtime, not that one because of some you know little thing. So I just wasn't sure if there's anything we are doing that sort of necessitates that. If not, great. Because <laughs> But if it does, we should then highlight it. Yeah, I'm hoping we don't get into any tooling that is specific to Podman or Docker, at least in our design at this point. Um, the only thing I'm thinking of is that it might get into Gvisor, um, Kata containers, when you get into spinning up each container's virtual machine, that kind of stuff. 
that might come into play, but I don't know if we're anywhere near close to that yet. Brandon, is, is a lot of notary v2 not predicated on client support at a runtime layer eventually and to container D? When you get into notary v2, I think what they're looking at is having whatever your um, image controller is. So something like, uh, what's the, I'm, I'm blanking like on the gatekeeper. The, yeah, gatekeeper. It's it's predicated on something like gatekeeper to check that signature before deploying the container. Yeah, that's the right moment. You don't want to do it on a scaling event, right? Correct. The moment it goes in. Yep. So yeah, it's, I guess, yeah, if, if we could stay out of the conversation, great. If, if we do need to dive into it, we should at least like, put that put that out there because I I know like one thing that I run into regularly is that sort of problem of like oh right this sort of thing only works a lot of times it's mostly just like hey this sort of thing only works with docker or whatever uh, because of some weird quirk um, but you just want to make sure that that it, it, it's it's kind of um, it's clear there. <laughs> I feel like a I handful think, of those that exist are slowly getting worked out of the system is like Kubernetes deprecated the Docker shim. And so now everybody's switching over to container D. And so anything that yep. was tied into something like the Docker socket is quickly getting rewritten or phased out. Yeah, I think also just like whenever there is something like that, we can just take note of it, write it down in the documentation and be like, he has some caveats to it's kind of like warnings. Um, but overall, you know, these things should work themselves out. If there, if there was anything that we would have to say, hey, the container runtime must possess the following characteristics, we could, we could express that without saying, hey, these are the ones that support these features, but hey, and sure, whatever you're running can do this. Yeah, and and I think I think this also kind of like leans into with the container runtime um, validating provenance. I know that there are two like distinct security models that some folks are okay with emission time um, validation, and some folks don't trust the control plane and they want like. Um, compute node time validation. Yeah, so with, um, with what Aradna said, um, do we want to, uh, I think it probably makes sense maybe just to kind of, um, as, we're, as we're realizing some of these things of like, Hey, this is something that maybe might not be a concern. It could be a concern. Maybe we just sort of put it somewhere in the doc. I don't know if we want to put it at the end or the beginning, just like maybe, you know, certain things that we could just sort of highlight. And then after a first pass, we can go back and say, Hey, are these concerns still valid based on what we said? If so, then we should probably address them somewhere in the doc. If they're not valid, then we can just kind of get rid of them. I read that slightly different. Like it reads as if we we're leaving out of scope or, or like we simply weren't talking about how to harden the stuff around. Like, is there a hard shell around this or like, is it like zero trust? Yeah. And often those are the most overlooked aspects, right? Because you get you get people who are at the top of their trade, know the greatest and latest and like hermetic builds and reproducible builds. But with the analogy of the software factory, you can have like the best conveyor belt, but if the physical door doesn't have a knob, like a bolt, like anyone can walk in. Exactly. And you can circumvent the whole yep. all these controls and directly go and deploy in runtime. There's always oh. a lower turtle as well. Um, yeah. It, um, so, 
my okay so i'm just going to throw out my general thoughts i'm not saying it's 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 everybody's but but i i think yeah like i feel like we should to to kind of highlight some of the stuff that andre said said before maybe it just kind of makes sense to just if it if it makes sense to anybody here just throw it in there and then if it doesn't make sense we can you know always refer to another document around hey we're assuming you're following these infrastructure security best practices or these other best practices. Um, you know, I, 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 right. I think that, there, yeah, there's lots of ways we can keep, yeah. You know, uh, and also to what Brandon said, you know, we could always keep going deeper and I don't know to what level we do want to go. Um, Cause yeah, I, I totally agree. Right. Like there are certain things in there that if we don't do them, then obviously, you know, if, if we, Let's say, say, hey, yeah, we're assuming you're 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 hardening your your infrastructure because if you're not hardening your infrastructure and somebody can just get in, they can obviously you know break the whole system in the first place. Yeah, and a lot of it is like, hey, that's not my job; that's somebody else's, right? Oh, I know like, exactly. Here's <laughs> yeah. here's what we you should know about the other person's job. Yeah, you don't yep. you don't need to like like. There's plenty of literature on intrusion detection and it, like intrusion prevention and all the modern techniques to do that and how to have the fence in depth. But here are the things you should probe that are present, right? Yep. I think that there are some key things that we should highlight definitely because of how the different things we're operating with, right? Like the way that we are operating with the software factory, there are certain things we can probably just say, hey, look, we're not going to make, you know, even if we don't say these are the infrastructure pieces you need to consider, we can at least say, when you're talking to the infrastructure person, um, these are the things you you need to make sure that you, you have these capabilities. Yeah. And your security guy and your network guy don't know how to define like network policy API and Kubernetes, but you do. Yeah, my thought is, Defining both sides of where we want to do our handoffs, because they're going to be there's going to be a group of people that want to build the secure supply chain. There are going to be a different group of people that are developing the software. Where those two need to do their handshake, what what are their expectations of each other? Similarly, on the other side of the of the handoff, once the secure supply chain is done, and you've built the secure artifact, it needs to get run. What are the expectations of that runtime? How deep do we want to get into that? Probably not too deep but at least what handshake between those two groups do you need? Yeah, and, and I think also defining, yeah, to, to your point, um, and it kind of goes back to the thing there, which, which we're still, I think, figuring out is how much do we want to take on versus how much do we want to say, hey, here's an assumption? Because I think it kind of goes back to some of the stuff before as well, like just providing this as an example, um, Hey, key distribution to the components inside of, um, uh, uh, to the components inside of the secure software factory makes sense that it's in scope. But do we want to sort of? We probably also want to at least make some assumptions on what is the actual underlying. How are we generating the keys and those sorts of things? Because do we like, or do we want to take on like, hey, here is how you should be generating keys, and 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 here are the you know the like how do, deep do we want to go there as well? I think that there's lots of um, trade-offs in, in all of these different things. And I think we just kind of, um, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, I um, wanted to add, yeah. add in on this as well. Um, I, I kind of like the idea of just putting assumptions. Um, we've had this discussions around other projects as well. And I think the, the, the general conclusion we usually come to is that there are way to like the responsibility of teams and uh, the trap models that they have are just way too many. Like everyone, you know, it's, it's not the same everywhere. And it's very difficult to kind of pinpoint, you know, who's my software team, who's my operations team, because sometimes it's multiple teams or sometimes they, they kind of put it all together. Um, and even within that, you know, people define their, their, their job roles differently also. Um, so we found that just having like, okay, here are kind of the, here are some suggestions of things you can do, like very broad suggestions. 
uh, with links to examples of how some people do it. Uh, and these um, just guiding principles should, will, will be sufficient for folks to like, get started. That makes sense. Uh, so yeah, what was just said in the chat there? Yeah, so we should state the assumptions explicitly. And I think then that also makes it clear if, if anybody thinks those assumptions are incorrect, we could always have that discussion. Um, the only thing I wanted to add in there is uh, from, <sighs> from my perspective, I think it probably makes sense both in a the, the assumptions we're making probably also make sense in both a breadth and a depth perspective, right? Like how broad are we going with the different pieces? Like, for example, you know, keys, right? That's it within scope, but how deep are we going with keys and what assumptions are we sort of making about those things? And, um, but from a breadth perspective, that is included. Yeah. On on that bottom turtle, like, are you are you checking your paper decryption keys into the vault of a fiscal bank, and asking them for certain guarantees? <laughs> so I think we have a uh, um, the additional notes section at the bottom. I, I try to kind of put a header as like guiding principles. Uh, I'm not sure whether that would be a good spot to like start putting things in. Um, and then, you know, maybe we need to tie it to specific um, sections later. I don't know. Let's see how it works out. So we're almost at the end of the hour. Before we head off, does anyone have anything that they could use discussing with others? to be able to complete work over the next week or every, everyone feels pretty good till we reconvene. Alex, how are you feeling? Feel good. I'm going to keep reading through. Um, I so the the one question that I um, flagged in the document that I can throw out here is I was just continuing to look at this chart here of the the mapping entities um, for the inputs and outputs sections on that. Are we meaning there? For example, it's, we have inputs code. I'm assuming we don't mean by that the actual code that the person is putting in the into the supply chain, but we mean by that something like where you're hosting and just or you know or or storing your code. Um, is, am I correct in that, or or is there something else that whoever made this chart was was intending for that section, or and uh, and the other sections in the inputs and outputs area? Well, can you can you explain a little bit what what the concern is? Because I think the idea here is like what sorts of things are are perhaps outside of um, the actual, at least right now, and, and to be clear, like if somebody thinks that the actual uh, code repository itself should be within scope, you know, as opposed to it, there's an assumption that, hey, that that's there. Um, I would think that the, you know, the source code is, the source code and the dependencies are like inputs to what is happening inside of a software factory run. I was thinking yeah. that inputs and outputs were being borrowed from Entoto terminology and being used in that context rather than anything you could input at any stage. I see. Alex? Or... Right. So I'm maybe asking a different question, which is as I'm as I'm looking at this and we're trying to map these entities to tools, right? And we have Kubernetes for the scheduling and orchestration platform. Then we get down to inputs and code, and I'm thinking, okay, so by code, does that mean the tool that we're trying to map it to is something like GitHub, GitLab that is hosting the the code, or are we meaning something else, for example? If it's not clear what, what's meant by it, 
and no one can defend it, we should we should erase it because it's causing more confusion. Yeah, well, I mean, I, in this case, like, and we can be a little bit clearer there. Like the the idea, so. I was viewing the inputs outputs of the secure software factory were something like when you have, uh, you know, when you have a CI CD pipeline, what are the inputs to a CI CD pipeline, right? Well, you have some code, you, you know, you're, you're pulling in dependencies, like what is coming from the outside world, right? So some of that is stuff like, you know, as an example, um, stuff that's coming from the outside world is probably things like the, the uh, you know, yeah, like the literal source code that you're building is coming from outside of that environment. Um, the, you know, the identities are coming from outside of the secure software factory, right? They're being distributed in. Um, so some of the other stuff in there, that's at least what I was thinking about. If folks think that it should be a little bit different, definitely open to that. But I, either way, I do think we should be clear about to some extent, you know, when when you're when you are doing a secure software factory run, what are the things that need to be included as part of that run, so that we know what we're actually working with? And and to some extent, I wonder if the inputs to the pipeline, in certain cases, might be assumptions, right? Like we're just saying, hey you are giving us something. And as long as you give us something that matches this thing, we don't care necessarily where it comes from. Yeah. So those inputs to the pipeline and out outputs from the pipeline make it clear. Yeah, I mean, I think so. So I understand the, the, the you know, I understand what the, the inputs to the pipeline, the outputs to the pipeline are. I'm, I think I'm, I'm, Trying to figure out where they fit in the context of this graph where we are mapping them to particular entity or to particular projects or technologies and you know and and to me it sounds like we really don't care what particular um, project or technology your code is coming from or you're using to to store your signed artifacts as long as it meets particular specifications so i think it, it to me it sounds like it fits more into the same sort of framework as you were talking about the with the the runtime um, where like as long as it meets these particular assumptions it's fine um, and not one where we're going to say and then we assume that you are pulling from this particular place does that is that accurate that sounds more or less correct to me um i mean the only times where i would imagine that that sort of falls apart is if there is a very very specific need like i can imagine there is an argument to be made that as an example because of the various tools we are using and the various things that we're doing there is only one artifact repository or whatever right that supports the metadata that we're including, you know, whether it's like something like OCI spec sort of thing, if we end up going that direction, that's the only time. But I think beyond that, that's kind of that, that, that more or less sounds right. Any other thoughts? How about we split it off a separate table? Because it's not mapping entities to projects and technology, so it doesn't belong there, but it does belong somewhere to illustrate like, well, even with like Priya's narrative of the protagonist of the story is the code. And we're going to talk about the journey of the code through the pipeline. Here's like the cast of characters. Alex, I, I think that was your point. Like this doesn't belong in, in the table. Yeah, I think so. I think I think we're I think we're on the same page. I just wanted to make sure that I was actually on the same page with you. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that that makes sense. So we're clear what this conveys and what that conveys is different from what the stable intends. So we'll we'll move we'll shuffle the stable somewhere or we keep it here for the time being. Figure how to use it.
Michael, are we having a, a dedicated writers session uh, next Wednesday? Or we're sure. meeting till Thursday again? Um, I mean, I, so my personal schedule is fairly open, uh, you know, um, regarding this. So I'm available, you know, uh, throughout the week, whether or not we want to have another session that's dedicated purely to the writing and, and then the other sessions more dedicated to sort of uh, working with the other folks. I am, yeah, I, I would sort of recommend if the more time, obviously, we can dedicate to this, the better, but I also don't want to impose on anybody because I know we all have so many different things going on. Okay, cool. Brandon, it, it looks like your your head's down on on writing your your piece. Uh, anything you, you need or anything you want to express? Nothing I particularly need. Um, just chugging on through the little bits I get. Awesome, awesome. True pot. Yeah, I, I think uh, I'm also set. I think I'll get. Uh, I'll spend some time doing next two days. Yeah, That's keep it steady, time. man. You've been. Yep. You've been right at it. Sounds good. And I won't be here next week, but I'll still be churning out as much as I can for you. You, you will not be in the library next week, or where? Where is here? Like, no, I'll have a different background next week. Nice. Something to look forward to. Well, enjoy. See you. See you in a in a few weeks. Uh, and you can you can ride from where you're back from from the other background, right? Enjoy yeah, that it's, time. It's company all hands, so still working. But uh, yeah, I'll is it is it out. is it IBM or is it box boats? All still hands. box boats, <laughs> and so we're grabbing the team together in DC for a change. Well, that's not for a change. That's the same place we were last year. That's cool. Awesome. Say hi to Tim for me. Will do. Cheers. Bye. Take care, everyone. Later. Thank you, everyone. Bye.